Kingdom Builder, welcome back. We are going through the last day of a preparation for a live seven-day miraculous breakthrough challenge. If you're catching this live, by the way, May 15th, you're welcome to join us the day right after Mother's Day. We're going into a seven-day period of fasting, prayer, and Bible study. What's up, Phil Burbank? Shout out. What's going on? And if you're interested in joining in with us, by the way, and 57 other people that are going into this, well, click on the link below. You can register for free and it's going to be awesome. But whether you're going in with us or you want to do this in the future, I'm going to be going over what a day in the life of this challenge looks like. If you're not familiar, I wrote a book called The Miraculous Breakthrough Formula. It is a seven day challenge, biblically guaranteed to get you unstuck and achieve the impossible Tall order, I know, but it's not my words. It's what great men and women in the Bible have done. So, yeah, 57, it's super cool. It's like it's in this. This is I know God's hand is at this because we were not formally launching this. I had a friend of mine say, hey, I want to do it. I'm like, let's do it. And we started opening it up and word got out and people are like, hey, I want to be a part of that. Awesome. So I've been getting the question of what do I do? In a, in a time of the Miraculous Breakthrough Challenge. Well, I'm going to talk assuming that you're doing a water-only fast. If you don't understand what that means or how that all works, go back to my YouTube and check those replays out. Subscribe to that. But the question is, what do I do during this time frame? Do I just go to a mountains and just like, you know, be by myself? And, you know, do I go to a desert somewhere, pitch up a tent? Or what do I actually do? I want to answer some of those questions today. It's going to be awesome. Old or new, both testaments. I think it's all one testament, right? So here's the heart of it. Jesus, before he went into public ministry, went through 40 days of prayer and fasting. Did you know that before Jesus did his first miracles, before he did his public ministry, he did the miraculous breakthrough challenge. God himself did this. So if you look in Matthew chapter 4, it documents this, and it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, interesting story. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. This is interesting. Matthew 4, 3. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. This is our goal in the day of the life of the breakthrough challenge. We fast from food, but we feed on the bread of life. We feed on the word of God. Fasting disconnects you from the world. Prayer and Bible study allows you to connect with God and really get his truth into your life. If that makes sense, there are two in the comments below. So what do we do? Our goal in this seven-day period, and this is assuming you're doing a food fast of some type, you can do other types of fasts if you want, if you feel led to that, is with the time and the energy that we would spend otherwise eating, thinking about that, you know, preparing, cleaning, all of that, is spend this time to really just seek the Lord in prayer, in study more. So replace the time, replace the energy we would typically do with eating, with feasting on the word of God. Okay. So let's say in day one, as we wake up, what am I doing? Just what, what can we do to just seek his presence more, right? I'm going to wake up. And I'm going to have my quiet time. Something I'd recommend is don't turn on your phone. Don't turn on your notifications before you you encounter the word of God. I'm putting in worship music. Like, for example, today, the first thing I do is I'm plugging in my earphones, worship. I'm putting in sermons. I'm just immersing myself in the word of God, in the presence of God. If you want a miraculous breakthrough, that means that we need God to show up in our life and we got to seek him. Right? So I'm not responding to messages. I'm not checking my emails. I'm not checking social media. I'm not eating, right? I'm I'm just then going to his word. I'm meditating through some scripture and I'm studying it. 
what am I, what does study mean? Study doesn't just mean to read it, to read through it. Pam, one of my friends is on here now. She said it changed her life when she started to study the word. That means you read the Bible like it's God's love letter to you. You read the Bible asking, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me through this text today? And you keep on reading and you keep on reading and you keep on waiting until the Holy Spirit illuminates things on the page. Have you had that happen to you before? You hear a verse that you've heard before, whether it's in a sermon, whether you're reading, and all of a sudden the words pop off the page. Take that and start to think about that further. To say, Lord, what are you trying to say through this to me right now? Journal it out, right? Just keep on taking that in. Okay. What else are you going to do during a day? If you work, keep on going to work. Keep on doing what you're doing, right? Um, our goal is not to just go escape somewhere. You don't have to go to some mountain, some desert, the Himalayas. You don't have to go to Bali to go find God. God resides in each and every single one of us who have called Jesus his Lord, right? Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So you don't got to go anywhere. Just go right here, wherever that you're at. But just be mindful, right? So as you're going through your day at work, as you're going through your day in your business, whatever it is that you're doing, continue to do an amazing job. You know what you're going to start to find? You're going to find that you have a lot of mental clarity, by the way. Because as the body physically shifts from glycogen in the first two days and it goes to the ketone bodies, it starts burning your fat for energy. You get all this, uh, your mental fog goes away and you start getting a lot of mental clarity. Okay. So keep on doing business as is. In fact, you're going to start to find that you're probably going to have a lot more energy. You're going to have a lot more clarity. You're going to have a lot more power when it is that you're doing your work. I remember when I was fasting, I was doing a training for the team and I do trainings all the time. But this one in particular, my wife came up to me afterwards and she was like, babe, what was that? Because it's powerful. It was packed. It was like, moan. It was like moving. Tears were flowing. And I'm like, uh, I can't take credit for this. It's because when you seek the Lord and the Lord's presence is on you, you change. And you're able to start to usher in the will of God through the things that you're trying to do. Who here would like more of God to show up in the things that you're doing rather than just us show up, right? Put a one in the comments if that's you. So as you start to seek him, just like when Moses was up in the Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights seeking the Lord, writing out the, the Ten Commandments, it was said that he walked down the hill and his Face shone so much with the glory of God that people were scared to look at him. He had to veil himself, right? That's what starts to happen when you seek the Lord. You change. It's kind of cool how that works. What else do you do in the day of the life of the challenge? Well, there's going to come temptation. There's going to come challenge. There's going to come times when you have cravings for food. There's going to come times when you want to give up. There's going to be times when you feel really tired. And what do you do during those time frames? Remember to take captive every single thought and submit it to Christ Jesus. Our goal during this time frame is we're fleshing out the fleshly desires. We're flushing that all out. And we're saying, nah, body, it's not you that's in control. It's the spirit that's in control. Now, remember, every single temptation will not come to you unless God gives you a way out. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 4. Jesus was tempted. And did you see what Jesus did to resist the temptation? He wasn't like, hey, yo, devil, I'm God, by the way, and uh, get out of here. He wasn't doing some meditative practice, seeking some gurus or whatever. He didn't just power right through it. You know what he did? He went back. He, he took captive of every single temptation. And he went back to what the word of God said. So it's important to bank these promises in our hearts so the Holy Spirit can recall it during times that we need it. And he stood on the promises of God in the word of God. And he showed us an example of what we could do during temptations. Remember, you don't have to give in to temptation. You can take power over that by the empowerment of God.
by knowing his truth and knowing his word. If that makes sense, comment amen below. All right, you're going to develop some discipline here. Okay, it will be some tough. They're good. There's going to be some physical things that are going to happen. So what do you do when you're tempted? What do you do practically when you have some, some tougher times? I would go back to worship. I will go back to reading the word. Drink more water. All right, just kind of just chill a little bit. Meditate on his promises. You know, one thing that I did as well, too, that you might want to do, too. Sometimes, honestly, and I'm going to give you permission, sometimes you're going to feel a little tired and drained. Sometimes the best thing to do is to take a nap. Yeah. Who here likes the sound of that? To take a nap. Really? Oh, my gosh. You nap? Yeah. Hey, Jesus, never once in the Bible has it said that Jesus pulled an all-nighter. It never said that he rushed. It never said that he ran. It never said that he hustled, but he rested. If you remember, after he did amazing miracles, he fed the 5,000. It was said that he went on the boat with the disciples and he took a nap. Even Jesus took a nap. If Jesus needed to take a nap, how much more do we need to take a nap, right? So if you're feeling tired sometimes and kind of chill out a little bit, right? Like it's okay. You're going to have more time in your life if you're doing a fast because you're not eating as much. Question. How many hours a day? Yeah, that would be good, right? How many hours a day do we spend thinking about food, eating food, cleaning up after food, preparing for food? Even if you're a fast eater, throw in the comments, how many hours a day do you think? I think even if you're super fast, you meal prep, you're really on top of it, at least an hour a day, right? Sometimes even two hours a day. Like it's, it's kind of a whole situation. Imagine an hour back in your life and you can spend that hour to just take a nap. Sometimes one of my pastors said the most spiritual thing you could do is to take a nap. <laughs> I took a power nap yesterday. Best heavenly rest in the world. Okay. But let's go back to the heart of this miraculous breakthrough challenge. Our heart is to seek the Lord above all things. Our heart is to seek his presence. Our heart is to disconnect ourselves in fasting from the the, the desires of the world. And from there, to be able to connect back with God with prayer. And then to dive into his word, to feast on his word, so that God can speak with us. And we continue to do that. We continue to do that. We continue to do that. And what you're going to find is a different, deeper relationship with the Lord. You're going to find that after you go through the hump, you're going to have clarity. You're going to hear his voice. It says in his word that, his sheep hear his voice. My sheep hear his voice. You're going to start to get ideas, epiphanies. You're going to get aha moments. You're going to feel empowered. You're going to feel like, man, chains are breaking off. Your prayers are going to be heard. We did a Bible study yesterday through Isaiah 58. And it says that when we fast properly, God hears your voice. God answers your prayers. There's power to fasting and prayer. Remember Matthew 17, 21, Jesus said that these things can only come about by prayer and fasting. So we're doing here together. And if you're joining in with us uh, with our live challenge starting May 15th, which you're welcome to join with us. Once again, if you want to register, go to the link in the bio, go to the caption. Every day starting May 15th, 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing a live Zoom for 15 minutes. We're going to have accountability and prayer and Bible study and just have a lot of fun with that. Um, you can make it live. We also replay those two if you can't make that time frame. But just to check in, right? And then as we go through the seven days, it's not that long. Think about seven days. The last seven days, how fast did they run by? But how much transformation really happened in the last seven days? I just want to encourage you. That seven days of setting aside for the Lord can do so much for you. If we believe that God can do a measure more in seven days than we can do in our entire lifetime. Just imagine the type of breakthroughs that can happen. Remember, this is the same God that created the entire universe in seven days. It's kind of productive. So what's seven days to us? What's a little temptation here and there? What's a little grumbly stomach here and there? But the breakthroughs are so incredible.
So if you're excited about that, put a seven in the comments below. If you're watching this live and you're participating with us, I can't wait. If you want to join us, join in, register. We have 57 people doing this with us. It's kind of crazy. And if you want more information, you can grab the book, by the way, The Miraculous Breakthrough Formula. Check out the link in the bio. You can grab the book and all that type of cool stuff as well, too. And if you know someone that should see this or do this with us, share this with them. Have them register with you. It's more fun doing this together. And um, I can't wait. A couple days left, and we're going to make this happen. All right, everyone. To God be the glory. Bless you. Prayers for an incredible, incredible day. And we'll talk with you soon. Bye, everybody.